Welcome to Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I am Tom Shalou. Let's check in with TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye Tease Deck. Andy? Thanks, Tom. Coming up on the big show, Hillary Clinton and many on her staff have pneumonia. Our panel debates whether the Democratic nominee is being used as a biological weapon next. <laughs> Plus, how many people make up a basket of deplorables? We'll talk to some deplorable arrangers to find out. <laughs> And finally, a new love bot sends your significant other thoughtful messages so you don't have to. It's the perfect gift for the person who has nothing. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. She's our resident contrarian, libertarian, Bulgarian, host of Kennedy on the Fox Business Network, Kennedy. He looks like Mr. Clean about to wipe down a server. Former aide to Senator Chuck Schumer and syndicated radio host Christopher Hahn. Unfortunately, his former trainer, Mr. Miyagi, couldn't make it today, <laughs> but we're lucky to have him. Republican strategist, political analyst, leg sweeper, and Fox News contributor, Tony Sayeg. <laughs> and in 1991, he rescued Leonardo DiCaprio from a life on the streets. <laughs> Sitting right next to me is the star of the reality show, Unusually Thick, actor Alan Thick. Okay, let's start the show. Is Hillary's health now a real issue? Cough once for no, twice for yes. <coughs> oh, she, she said yes. Clinton's campaign says it will release more medical information about her this week after she had to be helped into a van on Sunday. The Democratic nominee was videotaped wobbling woozily while departing early from a 9-11 ceremony in New York City. Nine minutes later, she told the press she was feeling great and even hugged a little girl. Her campaign waited hours to explain that she'd been diagnosed on Friday with pneumonia, the disease that I believe took Lou Gehrig's life. <laughs> on Monday, Trump wished Clinton well and said nothing about Hillary being too sick to lead. He also released his schedule for tomorrow. Let's see, crunches, PX90, a rally, 10K run, buns of steel video, rally, hip hop abs, and then a sensible dinner. <laughs> you gotta top it off with a Trump steak, it's right? It's PX. What did I say? <laughs> Where, no, wait. Trump does PX90. Yeah. It's a special. It's yes. You're right. You're it's right. a special workout. Uh, Tony, workout. Uh, what do you think? I'm gonna go to you first. <laughs> uh, well, there was also shirtless bear hunting with Vladimir Putin yeah, on his schedule right. today. So exactly. that would have to make less. Look, her first answer from the campaign to what happened was that she overheated. I mean, a car overheats. I don't think a person necessarily overheats, or at least that's not the medical diagnosis. Then this video emerged of her looking wobbly, shaky, some people say she actually collapsed, and then they had to tell the truth. But this is the problem all along with the Clinton campaign. It's lack of transparency. It's obstructing what we all know is basically reality. And until they're forced and met by the media and others to kind of be out there and transparent, they don't do it. And even David Axelrod, this is the important story part of, of today with this. Obama's campaign's Bengali called her out on this. This isn't just Republicans. This isn't right-wing right. conspiracy I, people. It, it looks, this true. is him I, saying I, her lack of transparency I is agree. a bigger problem than I agree that health records need to come out. I agree that they need to be more transparent in how they discuss what happened there. I also agree that Donald Trump should release his tax returns. I think that we need to see some other something other than a note from Dr. Nick from The Simpsons that he's healthy, because quite frankly, I've I mean, never seen anybody <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen anybody <laughs> that orange Strong be healthy. I, I, I mean, unless, he, unless his diet is completely carrots, which I don't think it is. He does like those steaks. You know, I well, don't know why he looks like that. Well, the Chris records that I saw that came out, uh, his medical records were from the hair club for men. Hey, hey, hey. Very oh, Alan Hold on, Alan. Oh, Alan. Oh, Alan. Oh, Are you thinking, am I getting a hair shot from <laughs> Alan Thick? <laughs> no. Oh, wait that a minute. minute. You That's should be so not fair. Kennedy, here's what I want to talk about. I don't want to get into debates about the health. I know Chris Hahn and I don't I mean, want to talk about it. That's a very interesting, it's such a partisan distraction saying, well, what about the tax records? Why don't we, why don't we pause for a second well, and actually discuss whether or not something is actually wrong with a woman? I thought you were a Democrat. Why don't you have a little bit of respect for the, the situation at hand? Because yeah, if she could seriously have something well his argument was trans his argument was transparency her. so when the Trump people say transparency that I say great Donald Trump, I have all four yeah, transparency that was David Axelrod's argument David Axelrod, I'm not a Trump supporter Donald Trump has said he has just had a 
complete physical, and he's going to release Great. his records on Thursday. I, I can't wait to see Okay, him. so what happens, let me pose a hypothetical, uh, what happens if he has a, a far more comprehensive evaluation, a current one, than she's had, including a 2016 neurological exam I that, that she has, has not presented well, to the Kennedy, media? So, no, I'm not done. So what if he does that and, and passes with a very clean bill of health? Does that now become a problem for Hillary Clinton? Uh, no. I think that she needs to present a clean bill of health as well. I agree. Well, That's what I just said. Does, I said it come out with a medical, come out with an examination, talk, have a doctor come out there and say she's fine. She had pneumonia. And look, yeah, I'm happy to see Katie, conservatives about, are saying that she's a human what? being. And that how about this? Needs, she, how about you know. she gets a, an examination from someone other than Dr. Dre or Dr. Pepper? There we go. Ooh. Well, look. Now you would sell Alan everything Thick. by you know, two debates and one cage fight. <laughs> That's right. And we'll see who. They should have a run around the reservoir. And they could do PX90. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. A very difficult routine. Yeah. Alan, we obviously have a lot of doctors of spin on this panel, yeah. mm -hmm. right? They're spinning away. But what do you think? I, I don't want to talk about Hillary's, I don't want to be a, uh, you know, uh, be a doctor here and decide if she's healthy or not, but I want to talk about the fact that what are they doing when they have a problem with telling the truth, it seems like. That seems to be the, the, the specter over their head. Then, you know, she gets, she gets pneumonia and they lie about it. Wasn't that a mistake? They prob I think they probably tried to communicate that when she was first diagnosed, but they emailed it. And that, 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 <laughs> it, got, and, uh, it got lost. And, yeah, yeah, but, uh, she it it wasn't it. marked classified, so they couldn't broadcast it to the world. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's hard to believe that anybody uh, now uh, in the world of social media, and especially under the scrutiny of this election campaign, could get away with hiding anything about anything. So it seemed like a dropped ball. Yeah. And, uh, and not necessarily oh, a but you know, you know, Unforced error. I agree. And, and the most fascinating part of this is here we they are again. They still haven't gotten on top of the story. And, well, and it's going to get worse, by the way. That's my prediction. It's going to get worse. I don't think this pneumonia diagnosis is going to end it. But the, the, the bottom line is Donald Trump for weeks has been talking about Hillary Clinton's health, her health records. Her stamina. Her stamina. And people have been saying that's chauvinistic of him. He's a bully again. Look at him. He's talking about all these things that are, are not really germane and necessary. And yet we now see okay. that it is she very important to God. If pneumonia. She's healthy, People get pneumonia. She is a human so say, being who is meeting, so shaking say. a lot of hands. Everybody says, oh, she took August off. She raised $124 million yeah, in, she met in, rich August, in August, going out and talking to people and raising money really? at their houses. And in, that's in a Hamptons, lot of work. Hills yeah, and, and Tony, and you know this. Yeah, but you shake a lot of campaigning. hands. That's you're going to get sick. You got to, you know, there's no okay. Okay. Uh, in the world. How about when you know you're sick and you continue to shake hands? How about if you've got pneumonia, if you're an active Petri dish and you go hug a little girl? If I were that little girl's mom, part of that stage photo op when she finally emerged from Chelsea's apartment after Lord knows what medical procedure, I would be I would be suing the, the campaign right now. Well, she better put her on antibi uh, antibiotics anyway. If you see that video where they were helping her into the and she slid under the yeah. SUV, it looked yeah. like I mean, Derek uh, Jeter. could have been wrestling, restless leg syndrome. We don't know what she had. <laughs> we don't uh, know. Yeah. Well, look. The RLS, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Look at this. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will both release additional health information this week. But what about Bill Clinton's health? Years ago, Trump performed his own phys physical examination on Bill. As you can see, yes. he's asking Bill to turn his head and cough. Yeah. Actually, this from is the front? <laughs> from the yeah. He gets in the he does yeah, in the front. God. This is one of a group of photos from the year 2000 showing Clinton and Trump hanging out at the U.S. Open. That's Melania, of course, on Clinton's arm, and swimsuit model Kylie Bax on Trump's. I don't think that foursome hangs out as much these days, sadly. Uh, Kennedy, it does cut into friendships, doesn't it? The the political. Oh, I wins. thought you were talking about Bill's cardiovascular medication. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm speculating upon I there. No, really, there's no, no, there was it, no discussion. Really, we just really wanted to show that photograph. It's really tough when your spouse runs to be leader of the free world uh, against Donald Trump. Yes. You know, it's it's almost an impossible task, but it's, oh, God, that picture. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, it's just a couple I wanted the split screen with <laughs> We're not. We're not the and the examination. Okay, come on, let's move on. Moving on. Hillary's health is... I think is, that Tony and Chris are going to do that I know, the end they, of the Suddenly, they weren't arguing. We're not going to reenact them. I, uh, I love Tony, by the way. This Next story, <laughs> Hillary's long health. Time. Long time. Love a long time. <laughs> Hillary's health has at least taken some attention away from her gaffes. To just be grossly generalistic, you can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it.
On Saturday, Clinton released a non-apology apology saying, Last night I was grossly generalistic, and that's never a good idea. I regret saying half. That was wrong. <laughs> And that was good enough for Trump, who addressed the issue on Monday. I was thus deeply shocked and alarmed this Friday to hear my opponent attack, slander, smear, demean these wonderful, amazing people who are supporting our campaign. Hmm, maybe I was wrong. If Hillary Clinton will not retract her comments in full, I don't see how she can credibly campaign any further. Okay, Alan, uh, what do you think? Was this a big mistake of Hillary's? She really walked into that one, didn't she? Uh, she did, but for, you know, for, for anybody to say that somehow we've lowered the bar after what's <laughs> been going on, where's the bar anymore? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, yes, it was a deplorable remark, uh, and uh, he seized on that immediately, and uh, that's just the way it's going to be for the weeks to come, I would expect. Yeah. Well, what about this? I mean, uh, Tony, they were comparing this to the 47% yeah. with uh, Mitt Romney. The reason being, people are insulting each other, like Alan said, it's been back and forth, but when you insult people, the voters, that's what she did and that's bad, right or wrong? You're absolutely right. So, she meant to say this. Mitt yeah. Romney basically she gave an off-the-cuff remark saying 47% of Americans, true statistic by the way, are dependent on government and that makes it hard for them to not vote Democrat, right? Mm -hmm. And who want to expand government. This was prepared text that she read from. She snickered, laughed, got the crowd's response. They loved Her it. Her millionaire friends in the room They're thought it was hilarious. This is the problem. I was giving you the props, man. You're a millionaire. You're a millionaire, you're a millionaire liberal. Not yet. But they, they, they were laughing and cheering her on. She thought this was perfectly fine. But then when people react to the fact that you are offending huge portions of the American people who live outside the palace gates, who live outside the beltway, who live outside uh, Beverly Hills and all the other fancy places she's been raising money from, and she's insulting them for disagreeing with her. And that really is what I well, think. Well, many of whom also are independent. And, and they're independent. Yeah, and, and, and and that, that is the, the massive swath of people that they are both going after. And she's insulting a lot of people because this is not a partisan race. Correct. This is not a typical race in any sense. And if the Trump campaign doesn't have deplorable t-shirts printed up by noon tomorrow <laughs> oh, they and do. selling yeah. them on they already masks, do. Yeah, Everybody, they, they everybody who merches out Trump okay. on Twitter who's been tweeting to me the last couple of days, because I've been on a bunch of shows about this, ha has deplorable in their screen. Yeah. They love it. Now. But so you got to admit it was a, 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 huge, a huge mistake. mistake. It's an unforced error. You gave the moral high ground to a guy who hasn't had the moral high ground at all, not even in the Republican primary. He has never had the moral high ground. They just gave it back to him. That is not good. It was an unforced error. They need to come out strong against uh -huh. that statement on their own, and they need to p pull it back completely. You never go after the supporter of your opponent, because those people have their reason for supporting their opponent, and you've got to respect that. Do you know why they're frustrated, though? Um, and you're absolutely right about that, is, is Trump was committing so many unforced errors that it was only a few weeks ago that a lot of people thought that he was setting himself up to quit the race because he was saying so many outlandish things before the transition from Manafort to Conway and Bannon mm -hmm. that uh, now it seems like that team has taken hold. They've kept him on message and the fact that she can't force those errors from him is really well, frustrating. And, and, and what just happened? That he was given a perfect opportunity to go off script with what happened to her health. He could have said nasty things off the cuff comments. He didn't. He stayed on now, script. Who is that? Is that Conway? That's Conway. That is, that is smart doubt. strategy and politics yeah. and messaging strategy Without which we would doubt. agree on. Yeah. And he what he did was he was even sympathetic to Yes. No, I exactly right. Right, yeah. right okay, on the money. And, and, you know, and this is what I said on my show earlier about that. That's something you would do if, if someone was diagnosed with a terminal illness or if someone's family member was horrifically injured. Oh, you, right. would, you would pause in a campaign and say, you know what? No, now is not the time for politics. Oh, yeah. I'm going to rise above but, this and I'm going to, as a human well, being, he offer like my being. condolences. Yeah. Like, this he is, did, this is but he also, him, in doing that, he made the illness seem more serious and made everyone pause because they were expecting yes. the typical reaction but, and they didn't get that. But on the deplorable comment, you actually said it right on before. Trump has framed this entire campaign from day one as us versus them. As basically the elites and the establishment 
establishment versus the population of the country that feels completely underserved by them. She walked right in to that exact argument by making such an insensitive, yeah. vitriolic comment. So okay. she actually gave him, I think, a huge assist on this. I want to move on, but very quickly, Chris Hahn. Yeah. She said, I apologize for half. So what percentage is it? What does she think it yeah. is? What's the ratio? I don't know, two, three <laughs> percent. Two, three percent of any group of people is going to be deplorable. So let's just leave it at that, right? Okay. I mean, well. you know, there's always, everybody knows somebody they don't want to be around. Two, three, it doesn't matter. They're all I'm watching sorry, this show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Donald Trump doesn't want a third wheel at the debates. Appearing on CNBC's Squawk Box, the number one show for squawking, Trump suggested nixing the moderator. Last week at the presidential forum, Matt Lauer was criticized for going soft on Trump. So Trump fears the next person will be very unfair to him. Let's hear his bold idea. I think maybe we should have no moderator. Let Hillary and I sit there and just debate. Because I think the system is being rigged, so it's, a very, it's going to be a very unfair debate. And I can see it happening right now, because everyone's saying that he was soft on Trump. Well, now the new person's going to try and be really hard on Trump just to show, you know, the establishment what he can do. Trump also suggested another possible change. The two candidates on stage at their treadmill podiums. <laughs> <laughs> If Trump gets his way, our very own Chris Wallace would miss out on moderating the last presidential debate. I think I know how Americans would react to that news. Where's Wallace at? Where the f is Wallace? Where's Wallace, Trey? Trey! Where the f is Wallace? from the hit show Treme. I think you all remember that. <laughs> Kennedy, yeah. uh, do you think this is a good idea? Please remember, Chris Wallace may be watching right now. I, I think it's a, a horrible idea. We need some sort of moderation, at least some, like, even if it's bare bones, libertarian, Calvin Coolidge moderation, we can pare down the moderation. But you, need, you need someone to throw kerosene on the campfire. Oh, Who's going to do that if the candidates are Gary left Johnson. to their own devices? Uh, well, that's interesting because <laughs> when you set up the story and you said that he didn't want a third party, uh, you know, he didn't want a threesome on stage. Yes. I assume you were talking about libertarian president mm -hmm. uh, Gary Johnson. But the last debate takes place in Vegas. Chris Wallace has to go. Yes. Mm. yes. Yes, exactly. And, you know, Chris Wallace is going to, I think they're going to stick with the moderators. I don't think anyone's going to take Trump's advice, but I think it's a great idea. Remember the Lincoln-Douglas debates? We all love those. And I don't think, <laughs> there was no moderator was there, was there? Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think Chris Rock should moderate. Yeah. But, uh, well, yes, uh, they will have, have a little fun, lighten the load a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but the, the thing is, do you like the fact, Alan, that moderators, they do get in there. You remember Cand Candy Crowley was credited for, you know, moving the uh, moving the polls after that debate because she was in there correcting Mitt Romney. They felt she was unfair to him. I think it's hard to uh, win in that position. I think uh, Lauer took a hit. You've got to know that he was looking at the clock the whole time. And uh, they spent a lot of time with Hillary on the emails. And uh, there, there's, there's some pressure either way. Do you, yeah. do you force a point as he did with the emails or do you let uh, Trump off uh, as he did with uh, some of his follow-ups? So I think it's a thankless job. Mm -hmm. Much like the president of the United States. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they, but they well, totally want it. But the, uh, I think that all this outrage over Matt Lauer, uh, I thought it was all ginned up because they want them to go tougher on Trump. Do you think that? I think you're totally right. Look, I mean, Matt Lauer hired a food tester after his last performance because the liberal media were all out to kill him. I mean, that, that was really the truth. It's the same thing happened. It was almost so funny. After Obama blew the first presidential debate in 2012 in Denver, and everyone went after McNeil, who was the moderator. They don't criticize their candidate for performing poorly. They go after the moderator. And in, in the case of Wallace, I will tell you this. He learned from the County Crowley thing. He was the only moderator, to my knowledge, maybe the others did, and that would be good, who said, look, I'm not going to basically try to be the, the, yes. the fact checker, the, you know, the person who's going to stop the candidates and, and, and they get gave into, him, they into gave that. Him for that. Talk. They were attacking him for that. Very quickly, Chris Hahn, we got to go. Uh, look, I, I didn't think he did it horribly, but I didn't think it was great either. I mean, he's a morning show guy. What do you want from him? You know why he had to overcompensate? <laughs> do you know why he had to overcompensate? Because his, his co-workers, Andrea Mitchell and Chuck Todd, have thrown so many softballs at Hillary Clinton. They could you know what? make up he's their own one of Howard Stern. Did you, you cut off Kennedy's he's, good he's, joke? He's one of Howard Stern's best friend. You think he would know about that? Okay, coming up. What was it? A bear in, a, in the Olympics? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it time to abolish ownership of pets? In a word, no.
Matt Charlton and Gary Francione are vehemently against animal rights. In an essay in E.ON, a magazine of ideas and culture, the Rutgers professors argue against the idea that, quote, we should give battery hens a small increase in cage space, or that veal calves should be housed in social units rather than in isolation before they're killed. They oppose these measures because they focus on reducing suffering. Instead, they call for complete animal liberation. No zoos, no pets, no animal farming. They put eating a hamburger in the same category as Michael Vick's dogfighting because they both exploit animals for human pleasure. And they equate keeping a pet to having slaves. The two law professors do have five pets themselves, which they admit seems problematic. They say they love them. So much, in fact, that they wish they never existed at all. That's love for you. Yes. That's an actual quote from two actual humans. And hence why we don't take this report that seriously. Now, obviously, as I said, oh, were you reading ahead, Tony? Obviously, we shouldn't take these two seriously, but the problem is uh, that many people do, and they will. So this is what we have to look forward to. Strange people with multiple graduate degrees are going to continue making us all argue about dumb things for the rest of our lives. You know what my pet beaver has to say about this? <laughs> it is a marmot. Yes. It's a marmot. Kennedy, I said beaver because I didn't think, I no, didn't want to confuse. No, because you're a pervert. You're, you're a filthy, <laughs> I did not. pervert. No, no, Whoa. Alan Dick, you've seen a lot of beavers in your life. I, as far as, <laughs> He's Canadian. What? No, I'm saying. Mr. Seaver, I'm trying to see the beaver. And so would you say that's a beaver or a, or a marmot? I'm yeah. saying he's seen a lot of beavers. I have uh, no uh, 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 real opinion about uh, beavers other than uh, we're uh, proud to have them as our national symbol. Oh, yeah, really? I don't know okay. who got the first choice. You got the eagle, we got the beaver. I mean, who, was the who picks first? Yes. But, uh, but I think the whole pet issue is kind of silly. I know I have a lot of pets who would be very upset if I said, Suddenly abandon them. I have rescue pets. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know where they're going with that, but. Uh, well, they want, I, I guess the, the idea is, I guess if you logically follow the, the hardline animal rights, the kind of PETA activists, I guess you have to go this way eventually, don't you? Well, you can make an argument about zoos. You could make an argument about uh, animal testing. You yep. could make uh, uh, an argument about uh, eating meat even, but not an argument about, I got a dog uh, looks at me every day with love and affection. That's right. And, and uh, to say nothing of my whole uh, squadron of beavers in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you, you take them in squadrons, do you? Uh, yeah. squadron we're, all, we're all coming over <laughs> yeah. for a field trip. <laughs> now, Kennedy, uh, c come on. I mean, uh, no meat. You gotta, you gotta have a hamburger. Okay, the only thing I will compare the urge to eat meat to yeah. is uh, the urge to have a baby. Like when you, as a woman, when you decide that it's that time, it is on. And there is nothing that is going to stop you from your pursuit yes. of, uh, of mm. getting some, some seeds in your lady garden. That's right. All right? We're taking your and word it's, for it. It's, and and the, the thing that, that comes closest to that is, is seeing a juicy bone-in ribeye mm. hot off the grill and wanting to sink your sharp teeth into it. We do not have flat teeth. Yeah. like horses. It's you know, not an option. The reason that we have tearing oh. canines so we can rip into flesh and we oh. have those herbs. Say it again. Chris the only thing better than that ribeye is if there was a big slab of bacon on top of it. See? That's all I got to say about yeah. that. Peter does okay. not like you. I don't care. That's I, good. Love, I like my steak and I liked it when I had a dog. I liked it when I had a cat. I I love love other people Tony, that you too. put <laughs> seeds in plenty of lady gardens. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. A long time ago. Uh, not for the last nine years. Uh, honey, happy anniversary. <laughs> wherever you may be. Um, <laughs> Look, I love PETA. I'm Lebanese. I eat everything on PETA, but I hate the animal rights group. And they do have a point in this study, by the way, about veal. They get a raw deal, no doubt. But no, I, want, cooked right. I, <laughs> I want the study that shows how Western civilization spends obscene amounts of money spoiling domesticated pets. I mean, people treat their pets like they are truly better family humans. members. Better, better than, than humans. Better than most families. They have it well. So they enough. Do. Enough. Keep I, your pets, everybody. All right, coming up, he gives better feedback than Yoda. It's halftime with TV's Andy Levy next. Welcome back. It's time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. 
Man, this is a weird shot. Weird shot, right? Yep. Yeah, that somehow the uh, city looks smaller. Yeah, I'm further away from the window. Oh, okay. Is what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a bit of there's a bit of a leak, so I had to move my table I away see. from the window <laughs> overlooking sense. Times Square. I get it. Uh, Hillary's health. Uh, Tony, you said the first answer they gave was that she overheated, and you said you think a car overheats, but a person doesn't. A person can overheat. That's, you get heat stroke and heat exhaustion when your body temperature gets too high. Yeah, but I never realized that that was actually a medical explanation. Oh, yeah. Th that was my kind of question there. Okay. All right. Uh, Chris, you agree that the Clinton campaign should have been more transparent. Yeah. Why do you think they weren't? You know, I think that they were concerned about all these conspiracy theories about her health, and they were feeling that this is going to play into it. So and they, that's the worst kind of thing you could have is have something that plays into a narrative. So yeah. they were trying to avoid it. So they were... They were concerned about conspiracy theories about her health, so they lied about her health. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on this. <laughs> Basically, they took a the page out of the Clinton. Yeah. They took a chance, right? They took a chance. Yeah, that they she took would a chance and they lost. I mean, look, now right. instead of her just looking like she was sick, they were less than transparent, and yeah. that's not good. Right. It wasn't good. It was a bad weekend for them. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Uh, Kennedy, I thought it was cute when you pretended to be worried there might be something seriously wrong with Hillary. I was very worried. Andy. <laughs> I was worried, Andy. Yeah. I don't want anything yeah. to be wrong. No, I know. I know you don't. You I'm are a you are a very passionate carer. Absolutely. It, my problem is, Andy. You know, when you go for job interviews and people are like, you know, what's your biggest weakness? And mm -hmm. I say. I care too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, you didn't like the fact that Hillary hugged that little girl no. uh, in a totally not at all staged event, by the way. I cannot <laughs> emphasize that enough. Okay, by the way, um, we, we've seen enough of these horrific things happen across the globe. Do you really think the Secret Service is going to allow exactly, anyone, yeah, I mean, any, any rogue actor to yeah. leap out of a crowd? Yep. <laughs> uh, I should point out, though, at least her campaign says that her doctor has said she is not contagious. Hmm. How they don't even know so. if it's viral or bacterial. If it's bacterial and she's still coughing and she just started with the antibiotics and she's had pneumonia for 16 years now, good chance it's continuous. And by the way, several of her staff members are also incapacitated with a yeah. sickness right now and they can't say, the Hillary didn't give it to them or vice versa. They yeah. don't know. Yeah. Who are these doctors? Yeah. I just hope to God know. there's nothing wrong with that girl now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Politico is reporting that uh, the sources close to Hillary say the real problem is she keeps getting dehydrated on top of the pneumonia because she doesn't like to drink water. The quote here is, she won't drink water and you try telling Hillary Clinton to drink water. <laughs> Since you only ever see her drinking water. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen Seriously, her like, I've seen more pictures of her. I, I thought that she replaced Jennifer Aniston as the spokesperson for vitamin water. <laughs> <laughs> or smart water, whatever. Yeah. Dumb water. Uh, basket of deplorables. Alan, you talked about how we've lowered the bar and you asked where the bar is. It is right across the street on 47th Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where everything looks like water. Yes, exactly. Uh, Tony, you noted this was prepared text that she read from and that her audience was laughing along. Yeah, I think Trump kind of nailed it in the speech he gave on Monday. He talked about that part, about her being at a fundraising event with elitist donors and how they all laughed at the line. That, that's correct. And yeah. especially when you're putting it in the same context that Mitt Romney made a similar mistake with his 47% that Barack Obama, remember when in 2008 he called middle Americans bitter, bitter clingers? Yeah. Who t so, but those were things that they said kind of off the cuff. While right. Obama's statement was definitely offensive, it was not part of his prepared remarks right. to the crowd. So right. Clinton believes this fundamentally, and I think the fact that she's so willing to broadcast it shows you how low the bar actually is, Alan, And by she, the way. she repeated that exactly exact same line yeah. with an interview with the Israeli news the Israeli outlet. Israeli TV, yeah. correct. Yep. Well, she said that she actually said ISIS was praying to Allah for Trump to win yes. in that same Israeli interview. And we all know she's a class act. Yep. ISIS is praying to the Buddha. They've switched. <laughs> uh, Chris, you called this an unforced error that gave Trump the moral high ground. Yep. But do you disagree with what she said, or do you just think she shouldn't have said it? I disagree with what she said. Okay. I don't think. Look, I, look. I know a lot of people who are supporting Donald Trump, and I think you know some of the reasons are a little off, but I don't think they're deplorable. Mm. And I don't think. I honestly don't think that candidates should ever talk about their opponent's supporters yeah. unless there's something specific that a specific person does or says. Right. But you can't even then really pin that on the candidate themselves. The right. candidates, you know, got their message. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, in honor of this, Olive Garden is now offering never-ending deplorable bowls. <laughs> <laughs> it's only half a bowl. That's only half a bowl, actually. <laughs> uh, Alan, how would you compare being on Red Eye to working with Robin Sparkles on the Sandcastle in the Sand video? 
Uh, you, you can't beat uh, Robin Sparkles, uh, Kobe Smothers. Uh, what a what a what a treat to go back and play myself uh, mm -hmm. every year opposite uh, Robin Sparkle. All right. <laughs> uh, Trump wants the debates to be moderator free. Tony, we, we just we know why Trump did this, right? I mean, by, go suggest go <laughs> by suggesting the moderators might go after him, he's thinking this will make th them not go after him as hard. <laughs> right. right. Well, it, you know, he definitely does know how to kind of frame yeah. conversations and put ideas out into the vortex. Yeah. Um, I, I will say this. I think there should be at least one unmoderated debate mm. that only has someone who keeps perhaps time and right. have, has a format. This has been the most unconventional political mm. cycle, certainly in my lifetime. I mean, I'm sure something happened in the 1800s that was really weird like this too. But this would be a great way to kind of put a cap on truly one of the most that exciting and, and dynamic I mean, let, let them go at it. Have a format, but let them go at it. Yeah. I, let it be I four hours funny. long. And let them go at it for four hours. We'll see how healthy they are. I think it should be uh, <laughs> moderated by Steve Harvey, and uh, we'll see what the uh, survey says. <laughs> and then I'll have to come out and reannounce the winner at the end of the debate. <laughs> Self-contained Self result. Uh, should we end pet ownership? Tom, you mentioned battery hens. Yeah. I just want to point out, these are egg-laying hens who live in what are called battery cages, not hens who are used as batteries. Okay. Oh. I just want to make sure. There's no right. hen matrix out there? But no, that's because that's what I thought when I heard battery hens. Yeah. Yeah. I think, isn't that issue all about uh, cruelty to the yes. animals we end up eating? I mean, uh, yes. it, it's understandable when you're going to choke a goose, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, Is that a euphemism for your squadron of weavers? <laughs> It's a, it's a famous Canadian pastime. Yeah. Yeah. Like they like to choke the goose up north. Huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Andy. Never thought I would hear that from Alan Ford. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you, Andy. Yep. Coming up, how should brands handle the anniversary of 9-11? Very delicately. But first, Kennedy. Every year, it seems, brands get in trouble for misguided tributes on the anniversary of 9-11. This year, it was three of the biggest corporations in America, Walmart, Coca-Cola, and Miracle Mattress. First, <laughs> there was this display in a Walmart in Panama City Beach, Florida. Boxes of Coke Zero were stacked to look like the Twin Towers under a banner that reads, We Will Never Forget. The display was removed after it sparked online outrage. A Walmart spokesman said the display was pitched to Walmart by Coke and the store approved it. But what Walmart and Coke did was nothing compared to a truly tasteless ad from a Miracle Mattress in San Antonio, Texas. It featured employees knocking over two stacks of mattresses as the store owner's daughter says we'll never forget. The ad is so bad we don't even want to show it. It's so bad the store has since shut down indefinitely. Here's what the owner's daughter had to say. With this uh, commercial, we never meant to hurt anybody or um, do any wrong. Uh, we are very sorry about everything, and um, we wish we never did it. People were looking at it as something of hate rather than something of, you know, like a sale or something like that. And we don't want to be known as hate. We want to be known as love and caring and giving. And, you know, that's who we are. We're a miracle mattress. To recap, that was the word sorry surrounded by 64 nonsense words. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, why are people so stupid? <laughs> well, you know, for some it's uh, genetic. Uh, <laughs> but I think uh, it's uh, personally, as, as a bit of an outsider, meaning a Canadian citizen who can only vote for Dancing with the Stars and America's Got Talent. Great I love being in this company. I so enjoy all of you. Uh, <laughs> so bright and so uh, uh, articulate and amusing and uh, passionate. And I watch you and I enjoy it a lot. That's fantastic. Thanks. I don't see any stupidity. That is there great. Go. Tony, Thanks, Thanks, I, asked him about I, I asked him about stupid people and then he went right to the panel. I don't know why. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, with, get it. with very warm, undeplorable remarks. I yeah. Know. What about these big companies? Though I understand the mattress thing. They're kind of dumb, but Coca-Cola? Yeah, you know, it's amazing to me how basic the idea should be that you don't plan your marketing around 9-11. Yeah. I mean, it's not Labor Day. It's not Memorial Day. You know, it's, it's not Christmas or, or some sort of holiday like that. This is a solemn occasion that the nation tries to unite 
uh, around. It's not an opportunity to sell your products. Yeah. So let's just take that off the table, yeah. and then you don't fall into these kind of silly yeah. traps. How's it happen? I mean, Kennedy, I do corporate gigs like stand up, and they're so afraid of anything. Yeah. And so I wonder how anything like this gets okay at a Walmart. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. I mean, these are two major corporations with mm -hmm. with teams of marketers and branding experts. But I'm not as offended by the Coke thing as I am at the mattress thing. I mean, the mattress thing was so stupid and it was so crass and I hate to pile on because I know the store has been closed and, yeah, right. and I, I think they have been effectively shamed. Like, everyone knows about this place and it was such a bad idea and they were trying to be clever and they obviously had no budget. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, and, and it was a different representation uh, with the Walmart and Coke thing, but, you know, you're right. Like, you shouldn't be walking down the aisle at Walmart and be like, I want a Coke Zero right now and 9-11. Uh, yeah. they, they're just yeah. two themes that really don't need Well, the National Football League has uh, certainly uh, engaged itself with everything that went on uh, yesterday with the tributes or non-tributes and fist trades. And the cleats. And, you know, that, yeah. that, that, that's as big a corporation and as, as uh, public well, they had to deal with a corporation yeah. as we have in the, in well, the country. you know, I'm a New Yorker uh, and, you know, worked in the U.S. Senate for a senator from New York on 9-11 and it's a day that still brings chills to me. I have a hard time getting out of bed on it, and when I see uh, when I see things like this, it really gets under my skin. And just, hopefully, yeah. people will learn and just avoid it. They just yeah. don't do it yeah. at all. Okay, coming up, what's a love bot? FYI, that was my na nickname in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Technology has the power to change lives for the better. This is not one of those cases. <laughs> Engineers have developed a chat bot that sends love messages automatically. The inventor explained, Lovebot is a bot that chats on behalf of you. It looks 100% like it's coming from your account. He invented the bot because his wife was upset he didn't say, I love you enough. And nothing says romance like creating a computer program to do it for you. <laughs> Take a look at a sample message. To my husband, this is in no way a computer-generated message. It is indeed coming from the heart, not literally, but a figure of speech. The heart being in the chest. Love from myself to you. That sounds like a woman, doesn't it? <laughs> and if you're a man, uh, if you're a man, here's an exchange you can have with your wife. Hello, honey. How was your day? Wife talk here. I'm listening. <laughs> wife keep talking. Go on. Wife finish up. Oh dear, you must feel terrible. You have my love and support, your husband. That works, doesn't it, Kennedy? Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, we we have to listen. <laughs> uh, what do you think is a good idea? No. If what? you're so bad at saying I love you, just uh, put it on your iCal. Just. <laughs> Drop it in your phone and be like, remind my wife I love her. Hey, that's a good idea. And uh, thank you. And also, maybe just, I don't know. Maybe a little. Just say it once in a while. A little real love. <laughs> real love. I like the. Love button the shower, you know? Yeah. Whoa. Uh, Han, inbox. The inbox. Drop a little note in the inbox. How's that? Every yeah. single day. You know? Are you talking digitally or? Hey, I'm letting hey, you. Uh, uh, I, you I, I, I know you're from Canada too. I mean, so it's, it's a, it, yeah. Look, just say I love you as often as you can to as many people as you can oh. all the time. Okay, okay. you do it. Oh, why Jesus. not do the bot as well? I love you, Ken. I love you, Ken. I love you too. Say it. What do you think? This is like love you, Alan Pick. If there was, if there was like a guy-only black market, <laughs> and we knew about this robot, but women did not. Right. I think it would have a fighting chance to work. Yeah. Especially if you were only outsourcing like love notes and sending flowers and chocolates and remembering anniversaries. But now that it's in the public eye, we have to all deny this is a good idea. It's terrible. No, <laughs> love robots aren't, 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 aren't anything brand new. It's just they always used to fit in the purse. Oh. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a massager. That's so weird. But you send out a couple of those messages you read. I think you get the message back. Uh, uh, yes, let's chat next week. Your wife's lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Then it's just you and the goose, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, that's 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 Han has a squadron of love robots, don't you? Uh, you know, I got a you team of people that keep other. me going here. Alan Thick, what network is the show on? Uh, Pop Network. Uh, third season, Unusually Thick, on the Pop Network Wednesday night, starting the 21st. Fantastic. Thanks Thank for you asking. for coming here. Pleasure. Very special thanks. Kennedy, Chris Han, Tony Sayeg, and Alan Thick. That does it for me, the lovely Tom Shalhoub. I'll see you next time.